Elon Musk, Eric Schmidt, and a Turing Award winner are all sounding the alarm on AI risk. May 2023 may be remembered in the future as the month the AI safety conversation went mainstream. This started, of course, when former Turing Award winner Jeffrey Hinton left Google in part to begin warning about the dangers of AI as he saw them. Specifically, Hinton had grown concerned that the arms race between companies like his Google and Microsoft was creating such incredible economic pressure to advance at any cost that former principles of safety and ethics and responsibility were being left behind in the race. Now, we've covered Hinton's point a lot on the AI breakdown, but today we have two business leaders who are also making news with their prognostications and concerns about the way that AI is developing. Both set of comments come from the Wall Street Journal's CEO Council Summit, which happened yesterday. The first set of comments that I'm going to read come from Elon Musk. Now, like him or loathe him, Elon Musk is a headline maker. He is constantly in the media, and so when he discusses different topics, especially tech-related topics, they get a lot of attention. When asked about AI regulation, he said, I've been pushing hard for a long time. You figure out some sort of regulatory body and they start off gaining insight and then have proposed rulemaking and then we'll get commented on by the industry. Then hopefully we can have some sort of oversight rules and improve safety just like we do with aircraft with the FAA and spacecraft and cars with the NHTSA and food and drugs with the Food and Drug Administration. The comments of Elon's that got the most amount of attention were those on AI risk. He said, I don't think that AI is going to try to destroy all humanity, but it might put us under strict controls and there's a non-zero chance of it going Terminator. It's not 0%, but I think it's a small likelihood of annihilating humanity, but it's not zero. We want that to be as close to zero as possible. And then, like I said, of AI assuming control for the safety of all humans and taking over all the computing systems and weapon systems of Earth and effectively being some sort of uber nanny. Non-zero chance of going Terminator is just tailor-made for headlines, right? When it comes to more practical concerns, Elon discussed his fears around AI and social media. One of the first places we have to be careful of AI being used is in social media to manipulate public opinion there. And then when asked about the next election, he said, There probably will be attempts to use AI to manipulate the public and some of it will be successful. And if not this election, for sure the next one. It wasn't all doom and gloom, though. When he was asked about AI in society, he said, In terms of access to goods and services, I think AI will be ushering an age of abundance. Assuming that we're in a benign AI scenario, I think the AI will be able to make goods and services very inexpensively. If you say over a 20 or 30 year time frame, I think things will be transformed beyond belief. You probably won't recognize society in 30 years. Finally, on the timeline for AGI, he said, I think we're perhaps only three, maybe six years away from it this decade. So in fact, arguably, we are on the event horizon of the black hole that is artificial general intelligence. Also speaking at the Wall Street Journal Summit was former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, and he discussed AI as well. Now, Schmidt has been involved in AI for years, but he also has concerns about how it's developing. For Schmidt, it's not about jobs or transformation. It is about existential risk. To put a point on this, he said existential risk is defined as many, 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 many people harmed or killed. Schmidt said there are scenarios not today, but reasonably soon where these systems will be able to find zero-day exploits in cyber issues or discover new kinds of biology. Now, this is fiction today, but its reasoning is likely to be true. And when that happens, we want to be ready to know how to make sure these things are not misused by evil people. Another AI risk warning came this week from Yashua Bengio. Bengio was a 2018 Turing Award winner alongside Jeffrey Hinton, and he just released a long blog post called How Rogue AIs May Rise. Bengio defines rogue AI as an autonomous AI system that could behave in ways that could be catastrophically harmful to a large fraction of humans and potentially endanger societies, species, or the biosphere. Bengio echoes many of Hinton's concerns with the AI arms race, writing, The competitive nature of capitalism is clearly also a cause for concern, as a potential source of careless AI design, motivated by profits and winning market share, that could lead to potentially rogue AIs. AI economists may help us one day to design economic systems which rely less on competition and the focus on profit maximization, with sufficient incentives and penalties to counter the advantage of autonomous goal-directed AI that may otherwise push corporations there. The risk of rogue AIs is scary, but it may also be a powerful motivation to redesign our society in the direction of greater well-being for all. Now, there are plenty of detractors who point out problems with Bengio's arguments, but I share it in the context of this broader, increasing conversation about AI safety in the public discourse. 
This, of course, is entering the political sphere as well. A couple weeks ago, the White House, of course, met with AI CEOs, and now the British government is doing the same, with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak hosting OpenAI's Sam Altman and others as well to discuss these exact issues. Leaders from Anthropic and DeepMind were also present, and it doesn't really seem like we got a lot of detail about what was discussed except very high-level trivialities. In the meantime, the EU is advancing what could be pretty onerous AI regulations. OpenAI's Sam Altman has in fact said that they might have to leave the continent if the regulations go through as they are currently written. Speaking in London, he said that he had, quote, many concerns about the EU's planned AI Act and that the details really matter. We will try to comply, but if we can't comply, we will cease operating. Here's how the Financial Times describes where we are. The EU's AI Act was initially designed to deal with specific high-risk uses of artificial intelligence, including its use in regulated products, such as medical equipment, or when companies use it in important decisions for granting loans and making hiring decisions. However, the sensation caused by the launch of ChatGPT late last year has caused a rethink, with the European Parliament this month setting out extra rules for widely used systems that have general applications beyond the cases previously targeted. The latest plan would require makers of foundational models, the large systems that stand behind services such as ChatGPT, to identify and try to reduce risks that their technology could pose in a wide range of settings. The new requirement would make the companies that develop the models, including OpenAI and Google, partly responsible for how their AI systems are used, even if they have no control over the particular applications the technology has been embedded in. And even as the EU Parliament moves forward with regulation, Google is also meeting with EU ministers to develop a sort of voluntary AI pact in advance of any regulation being brought to bear. EU industry chief Thierry Breton said on Wednesday, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, and I agree that we cannot afford to wait until AI regulation actually becomes applicable and to work together with all AI developers to already develop an AI pact on a voluntary basis ahead of the legal deadline. Now, for my money, the most interesting conversations about AI risk and AI safety happen not in the halls of Washington or Brussels, but on the pages of Twitter. G. Fodor, for example, says, I think Eliezer Yudkowsky should spend more time thinking and writing his answer to this question. What can governments do not to decelerate AI, but to alter incentives or deployment resources that would counterfactually accelerate us faster towards solving AI alignment? Eliezer responds, little or nothing, unless they're willing to look far enough afield to consider options like a crash project in neuroengineering for augmenting human intelligence beyond that of the smartest current people. Then he and G. Photo go back and forth a bit, but that's not really the point. The point is that Twitter, in these circles, is where the actual interesting conversations about what can be done are happening, more so than just politicians checking off boxes that need to be checked. Perhaps that's overly cynical, and a regulatory regime will be done well when it comes to AI. But for right now, I wouldn't bet on it. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. If you are enjoying the AI Breakdown, please like, subscribe, and share it. Go subscribe to the podcast or the newsletter. You can find all of the information about those things at breakdown.network. And until next time, peace.